see over there ends up the bolt pattern's not correct, so I'll trade it off somewhere. And here's the GMC, that's my new acquisition back in November of 2017. It wasn't running, and it had been at least stored in the dry for who knows how long. It was collecting junk. And I traded a running 1972 Carmen Gio for it. That grill is not stock. It's been that's an aftermarket chrome, and it's missing the big GMC right there on the very on the nose, which I'd like to pick up one of these days. Those uh, turn signal running lights are not stock either. It should have been a teardrop looking uh, light fixture, which I would much prefer. But that's how it came. Now the engine in this had some serious problems. It had a Chevrolet 250, a 79 version, 70, uh, Chevrolet 250, uh, six cylinder in line, and it had a cracked head and some various other problems. So I horse traded around and picked up another engine, and I decided uh, to go with a small block Chevy. This is a uh, 69, uh, 300 horsepower, uh, 350 according to the numbers on the block. Now, I believe it has an other than stock cam in it because for the life of me, I can't get it to idle as smooth as I'd like. And uh, it'll run like a, well, what's the term I can use? Skull today. <laughs> but anyway, uh, it's got power brakes up there on the firewall and uh, that was, I had to replace them, but that's where they were, uh, the original defective ones were. That battery should be underneath the passenger floorboard, but it was moved up there and I decided just to leave it. I did add that electrical harness there for the additional electric uh, circuits I needed and I cleaned it up. This needs rewiring and it'll, it'll get it eventually. Uh, overflow tube here, uh, it's an aftermarket I've added. I don't know if you can see, but the, uh, it's an electric fan, 16 inch, with a homemade uh, uh, cowling to uh, help cool better, which it seems to do. I've probably got about 200 miles on it since I've got it running. The body's in pretty good shape uh, for its year. Someone moved the turn I mean the uh, windshield wiper up there which is going to get changed I do not like that up there the interior ripped up bucket seats and I've gone ahead and just put cheap seat covers on them now just so I can drive it that red trim is about well the color taste of the, of the builder is definitely not mine uh, that's coming off I'm going to hope to get them down to uh, uh, around the gauges anyway, get that chrome back. If not, then, uh, then everything will be black. I'll just take it black. That white uh, grill cover, I'll paint it black, but the uh, glove box cover will remain the same. Uh, none of the gauges worked, so I've added some gauges. There's a gas gauge down there. And over here, you can see the uh, temperature, oil pressure, and uh, voltmeter. Now, I'll take it back. Now, the ammeter right here does work, and uh, but that's the only of the gauges. I'll, uh, I'm going to eventually repair them. And uh, I put my Garmin up here in where the radio would go. Its purpose is to uh, give me a speedometer <laughs> at this point because, of course, the speedometer don't work in this thing. Just a work in progress. The bed, I don't like it either. I'm going to go with some tongue and groove in there for now. Perhaps go with something uh, nice rebuild later. The wheels and tires look really good, and I like them. But as far as handling, it's not very good. On the rear here, you can make it out. Those are, uh, 
These are Krager mags, and those are uh, 225 70R14s on the back. And on the front, they wanted this low riding stance, so those are 215 60R14s, which are too low, and it makes it ride pretty much like a buckboard. Those are six and a half inch rims, so I've uh, researched it and decided I'm gonna put those the same that's on the back up front and just keep these tires for spare or horse trading or something. I have no idea from whence Bill and Jill's malt shop is. The phone number doesn't include a area code, so you know, back in the 80s, probably when this was originally built, uh, you know, we were all seven digits, so dialing. So, anyway, I believe this truck originated from up north based on what I've discovered underneath it. There's a whole lot of rust repair. We don't have a whole lot of rust problems down here in the south, so that's the only thing I can gather. Oh, of course, this is 12 volt, where the Chevy over there is still 6 volt. And let's see over here what we got here. We got two wheel horses. One's a, one's a 1966 eight horsepower with the mower and uh, four speed. And behind it is a 1966 eight horsepower with that sickle bar mower that I use around the pond and uh, to mow a bank. And it's a hydrostat. First year of the hydrostat for wheel horses. A tiller, and you can't really make it out behind that cyclone rake, but there's a back hose that bolts to this Kubota here. And behold, behind the Kubota there is a front end loader. I've got as much squeezed in here as I possibly can. I just really need more room. Like I say, I really didn't intentionally set out to have two 1949 pickup trucks and uh, but that's what I've got now and uh, and uh, they both drive and are actually even though they're the same year they're actually totally different have totally different characteristics the Chevy rides fairly smooth that 216 will pull hills it's uh, it loves 40 mile an hour and don't like to go much over that so it's a back road cruiser whereas the GMC well it likes to run that 350 yeah when I'm when I take it out it tends to creep up in speed and uh, with those power brakes I can bring it down pretty easy but it doesn't cruise real good with them small tires in the front so I'm hoping a tire swap will get that fixed up but anyway little Leonard Skinner playing in the background there never hurts and one other thing that 216 is getting a little wore out I've stayed in some other videos and, well there's a 1954 235 that's been bored out with new pistons new, new bearings twin carbs it may eat out about 150 horsepower it's going to end up in here that 216, I should think about pulling it. It leaks oil out of just about every seal and crevice it's got. Even though it still starts and runs. Compression is so low, I can turn that thing by hand. I mean, it would be easy to hand start if, if, uh, if I so desired. It even the harmonic balance has the uh, rod to go through to actually do such a thing, but I don't have the rod. It, well, I'm not inclined to do that anyway, although it probably would. But anyway, that's just kind of a little overview of my shop. It's, it's not very clean. I don't know why I'm showing all this. It's pretty disorganized right now and, and uh, dirty. But that's the way it is when you've got more junk than places to store it. So, with that, I'll sign off. And uh, for those that stuck around, well, thanks for watching. I'll 
shut up a little bit and let's hear this song. <laughs> <laughs> 